Okay, <laughs> can't resist it. Welcome. Same thing. Looking forward to seeing you and having you here for the squares and square roots button. Now, I, look, look, look. Is this not just the funniest thing you've ever seen? Look, I'll even zoom in for you. Look, look, look. It is a square root. It's the root of a tree that's... Got... Yeah, I know. I tried too hard. I know. I know. I know. All right. Thanks very much. Comments below for those people who actually can think of far funnier jokes for squares and square roots. But look, this is the best it gets. So welcome to this today, my lesson on squares and square roots. Uh, those of you who are following along in my lesson, that's the work I hope you have achieved if you are out there in internet land with access to the Cambridge Essentials books. They're pretty good questions, but otherwise, let's go back to my recap. So we've come across lots of power numbers in the previous lesson, and we've used them to write prime decomposition in index form. And don't forget expanded notation. We, what is expanded notation? What do you mean you haven't watched the previous video? Stop now, rewind, and watch the video. But there is only one power number which is really important in mathematics, and it is used a lot in later chapters, and it is a floaty 2. Probably that's the most common floaty number, all right? So let's think. 2 with a floaty 2, and 3 with a floaty 2, and 4 with a floaty 2, and we have X with floaty 2s, lots of them. And you need to know not only what it looks like, what it means, but how to use it. So, if you remember, way back when we first talked about square numbers in a year six video, I think it was, we can express certain numbers by drawing squares made up of dots. And if you see here, that's got one dot. Fairly obvious. How many dots are in the next one? Four dots. And then nine dots. And then 16 dots. And then 25 dots. What do we notice? Well, we notice that this square is two dots by two dots. This square is three dots by three dots, four dots by four dots, and five dots by five dots. Now we could continue drawing these things to come up with the rest of what we call my square numbers. So we already now know my square numbers are one, four, nine, sixteen, and twenty-five. But do I really want to draw the next six by six? And then we'll count all those dots, and then the 7 by 7, and then 8 by 8, because this is only 1 by 1, if we look at it. Well, as I've said here, it actually gets really time-consuming. So there's got to be another way to find the square numbers. Well, as I've said, squares have the same side lengths, which are all the same. And we can see that for the first one, we had a 1 by 1. If you remember, that one dot was 1 by 1. And the second one was 2 by 2. I'm not going to continue drawing these. And then they were 3 dots by 3 dots, and 4 dots by 4 dots, and 5 dots by 5 dots. Well, so it goes on. Well, if we now replace the word by with a time sign, which is totally possible in mathematics, then what do we get? We get 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and 5 times 5. And lo and behold, when we multiply those together, we get 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. And yay! That means that my next one would be 6 times 6, which would be 36. And 7 times 7, which is 49. And 8 times 8, which is 64. And so they go on. And here are my first, what would that be? 12 square numbers. Now, my advice to you out there in internet land and who are being taught by me is to learn these things. Actually memorize them. There are a couple of others that you need to memorize as well, I think, to make life a lot, lot easier. So, 144, if you remember, would be 12 times 12. Another one to remember is 13 times 30. 13 times 13, even, which is 169. Now, the great thing about 14 times 14 is it's really easy to remember because it's 196. And you're going to say, well, how did you remember that easily? Well, that was a 6 and a 9, and that's a 9 and a 6. So they just reverse. That's the way I remember it. 15 times 15 is another great one to remember, which is 225. And finally, 20 times 20, which is 400. These are the common ones that are used throughout mathematics. They're always good for you to actually learn. Why? Well, it just makes things a bit quicker in mathematics. So we can now find any square number so long as we know this side length. So what is the square of 13? Again, if we think about this, that's now a square with 13 by 13. So what do I do? 13 times 13, which, if I remember, is 169. 
What is the square of 17? Well, 17 squared is 17 and 17. Wow. 17 times 17. Well, I'm going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. So let's do it with this whole... Uh, 7 times 7 is 49. I'll put a little 4 down here. Now, I imagine everyone in Australia is going, what do you put the 4 there for? Well, just deal with it. 7 times 1 is 7. Add the 4 is 11. So now I get rid of that little 4 because I've done the 7 times the 7 and the 7 times the 1. Now I'm going to move on to my tens column. I put a 0 in my units column. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 1 is 1. And so when we add those two together, I get 289. So... 17 times 7, Dean is 289. And finally, what is the square of 20? Well, I'm just going to write that one down because I know that one because that's one of the ones. Now, we don't want to keep writing what is the square of. We don't want to keep writing this text. Remember, mathematicians are lazy. We want to write things short, concise. We want to write lots, but we want to write it quickly, right? I don't, please don't think that I'm just saying we write answers only because we don't in maths. Don't do that, please, right? So we want to try and write it in an easier way. Well, what is the square of? We've heard of these square numbers, and so the square of 13 can actually be written as 13 with the little floaty 2. And we say 13 squared. What is the square of 17? It's 17 squared. And what is the square of 20? It's 20 squared. And notice how I say that, all right? 20 squared, 17 squared, 13 squared. So what would 7 squared be? Well, that's basically the same as saying 7 times 7, which is 49. And what is 12 squared is the same as 12 times 12, which is 144. So that is the same as saying, what is the square of 12, which is square of 12, and 12 times 12 is 144. Right? So this stuff becomes really important and used ever such a lot. Right? Now in math, what we do forwards, we can do backwards. Remember, primary school, you're taught to count 1 to 10. Then you're taught how to count 10 to 1 because your brain doesn't automatically do things backwards, which is weird, really. But anyway, I wonder whether computers can. Artificial intelligence probably will soon anyway. So the world will end when we're taken over by robots. Ooh, Terminator. Moving on. Random. Doing things backwards in mathematics. What we do forwards, we can also do backwards. So... When, let's look at this, if the square of a number is 196, so something, we don't know what it is, squared is 196. A number that multiplied by itself is 196. Wow. He, so they've given me the answer and we've got to work out the question. What number when multiplied by itself gives me 196? Well, hold on a moment. That's one of those ones. I know that 13 times 13 is 169. And I know that 14 times 14 is 196. And so the answer is that question mark must equal 14. Because 14 times itself, because we know that 14 squared is 196. Wow! Now, I know I said we've used trial and error here, but in that situation, it's easy to work out because I've remembered them. But again, there must be a quicker way to write out that sentence. What numbers, when multiplied by itself, give you? Right? And this is where we go back to that really cheesy pun at the beginning, which was the square root. And as I say, let's say hello to square root. Hi, square root. How are you? Well, it actually has the word square in its title, right? This thing here is called a square root. And again, sorry about my hand waiting today. I don't know what's going on there. So there is no quick to remember it. You just have to learn it. All right, so here are some examples. What is the square root of 64? Well, what this is saying is, remember, what number, when multiplied by itself, will give me 64? All right, so what number? when multiplied by itself, gives me 64. Well, basically, 8 is my correct answer. Why? Because 8 times 8 is 64. And so what one number, when multiplied by itself, gives me 64 is 8. Here we go. The square root of 81 is basically saying what number, when multiplied by itself, gives me 81. Mm, oh, hold on a moment. I know that 9 times 9 is 81. So the answer must be... 9. And again, it's a single digit. It's just one number. Right? That's what the answer is.
And what about the square root of 144? Again, what number, when multiplied by itself, gives me 144? Well, again, if I know my times tables, I know that 12 times 12 is 144. So the answer there is just 12. Now, square roots are very much like brackets. You remember when we did bid maths in a previous video? We said that we did brackets and then indices and division and multiplication and addition and subtractions. Well, square roots are very much like brackets in the sense of you have to do what is under the square root sign before you can move on. All right? And what I mean by that is you have to simplify whatever is under that square root sign. I suppose the best way to explain it is using an example. So evaluate. Math, again, uses some random words, doesn't it? Like, what is evaluate? Evaluate just means come up with an answer, all right? Simplify means make it look simpler. Uh, calculate, well, you could answer, that's the use, says use your calculator, but calculate means also find an answer. And as we go through this course, I'll let you know more and more of what these words mean. But evaluate is the square root of three squared. Right, so the first thing's first. Three squared plus four squared. It's a square root sign, so I have to simplify what's underneath it first before I can actually move on. Well, I know that 3 squared is the same as 3 times 3. So I can now write that as 9. And I know that 4 squared is the same as 4 times 4. Remember, squared does not mean 4 times 2. It means 4 times 4, which is 8. Uh, it's not 8, it's 16. Sorry, I'm talking about 4 times 2. What am I talking about? And again, I can still simplify. I can make what's under that square root sign simpler because I know that 9 plus 16 is 25. Now, is that the end of my answer? No, because remember, the square root sign is saying what number, when multiplied by itself, gives me 25. Well, there you go. 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. So, when I evaluate the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, I get my answer as 5. Evaluate, there we go. Same thing, another example, the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. It's square root, so we have to do what's underneath first. So let's write it out. 5 squared is the same as 5 times 5, which is 25. 12 squared is 12 times 12, which is 144. Add those together, 169 with my square root sign. And what number, when multiplied by itself, gives me 169? That would be 13. So there's my answer, 13. Finally, can't finish a lesson without some sort of graphic and comment. Well, there we go. There is a duck randomly sitting a math test where the question says find the square root of 225 and he was just like hey dude i didn't know it was missing we started cheesy we end cheesy thanks very much for watching i look forward to seeing you next time it's been so great having you watch this video that i'd like to see you again and again and again wow we could make some amazing maths together so if you'd like to and you'd like to be updated as to when i upload new videos why not subscribe by clicking the button on the right Otherwise, if you want to click and see another video created for this type of series, then click the video on the left. All right, well, you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you again.